Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we are here in Sydney, Australia at my local university campus. What I'll do is I'll pan the camera around and edit that in so you can see where I'm sitting. This is such a wonderful place to be today because the university is closed. So I'm recording this on now I know what the day is, it's Thursday, the Thursday after Christmas and I, I don't know what date it is though, which is very English of me. I've been watching some of my English vloggers and they're all saying, I don't know what day it is. I think that's a thing. I think that's an English thing that between the 25th and the 1st, no one knows what day it is. I at least know it's Thursday, but I don't know the date. Anyway, we're going to take a look at the year ahead for everyone if you want to skip to your sign you're very welcome to do so if you'd like to stick around here i'm going to talk generally about the year the astrology for this year what we can expect i'm also just realizing i'm going to put my bag out of the sun <laughs> so that things in there don't melt okay i've got some camera equipment things like that all right let's take a look at the year ahead what do we have going on and i'll see if i can animate stuff by my side if that helps just make things a bit easier but what do we have going on astrologically in 2024 well we've got 13 new moons we've got 12 full moons We've got five eclipses this year. So we've got two solar eclipses. We've got three lunar eclipses. As per the Vedic numerology, we are running a number eight year. And we've got number one months happening in Feb and November. So we're running an eight year. It's a Saturnian year. It's a year all about structure. This could be a year where we're starting long-term projects, things like that. I'll, I'll go into that in more depth as, as we get deeper into these notes. I've got some dates here for Akshaya Trithya. Now what is Akshaya Trithya? Akshaya Trithya is when the sun and the moon are exalted and these are beautiful days to start something new. Really great day to get married, a uh, great day to launch a product or start a business, any of that kind of thing. So for that, now I've got the time, my astrologer time is always set to GMT zero, London, UK. And I've got here Akshaya Trithya, 8th May, 2024, from 3 p.m. to 10th May, 5 p.m. So to be safe, you know, you can nominate 9th May as your day to start something new or do something special or beautiful. Now, Rahu Ketu will still be in Pisces, Rahu in Pisces, Ketu in Virgo, and you can watch my video. I'll put a link above where you can watch that. I've covered that transit in a lot of detail. For this video, I'm going to cover the transits of Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars, because when we're looking at the year ahead, sorry, I'm going to tinker with my hat, just make sure it doesn't fly away. Um, when we're looking at the year ahead, what I, I like to do is we've got the Earth here and we've got, you know, Saturn out here. We've got Jupiter, we've got Mars and then we've got the Earth and then we've got the inner planets. You know, we've got mm, Moon going around the Earth. We've got Venus, we've got Mercury, we've got the Sun. Now, when we're looking at Sun, Venus, Mercury, Moon, we're looking at our internal world. I really like to look at those in the monthly episodes. By the way, I'm going to do a January monthly, but that January monthly, I'll probably record it next week now. It'll be a few days late, I think. Sorry about that. I'll try and get it done as quickly as I can. But uh, yeah, I'll see. If I'll just do my best. But basically, when we're looking at those internal planets, we're looking at our inner world. We're looking at how we're going to feel. We're looking at, you know, um, and especially with Venus, we're looking at love, with Mercury, we're looking at our logic function, concentration, sun, the soul, moon, how we feel. When we've got the outer three planets here, Saturn, Jupiter, Merc uh, Mars, this is where we're looking at, okay, what are the events going to be in the outside world? And that's why in this yearly overview, I'm really going to focus on those three planets. Okay, so, and that's how I've constructed the 
uh, outlook for all of the signs as well. I've really constructed it on the basis of Saturn, Rahu Ketu, Jupiter and Mars. All right, and that's how I like to read the, uh, the period of a year. You can read the period of a year very well just with Mars as well. Mars is brilliant. When I'm looking at the period of a year, I like to look at um, Mars very much, especially for success, career, all that kind of thing. Okay, so let's take a look at Saturn. What is Saturn doing this year? Well, we're going to continue uh, this transit of Saturn in Aquarius and I've got here Saturn specifically for 2024. So we've had Saturn in Aquarius, you know, 2023. It'll be there till about March 2025. But what's it going to be like specifically for 2024? Well, Saturn's very much about work. You know, he's the taskmaster. And what we're doing this year is we can be laying the foundation for long-term plans. It's a great time to take concrete steps on big goals that might take years to achieve. And as I was looking at Saturn's transit, this quote came into my mind quite strongly and I'll put it on the screen for you. It's by Confucius. And he says, it does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. And I really think that if we've got a quote for this year, it's this one. Don't worry about if things are taking time, things are delayed, things are slower than you expect. There might actually be some wisdom behind that that you're not able to see right now. So that's very Saturnian. You know, you look back and, and you think, wow, I'm glad that thing took time because it needed to, right? Saturn is very wise as well, as well as Jupiter, you know. I know Jupiter gets all the credit for being wise, but Saturn's very wise too. Saturn is a long-term thinker. So I've got here, this is not the year to stop. 2025 Mars year, that's a number nine year, that is likely to contain stops, cycles ending, that's a time to finish something. But this is really a time to sustain. We wanna keep going, you know, even if it's been really hard. And I know some of you had a tough 2023, it's most likely because it was a Ketu year and it could have been a confusing year, an abstract year, a year that was difficult to feel like you're in control of your own life. Um, it, it could have felt just hard to be grounded as well. So if you had a tough 2023, see if you can work the Saturnian way this year in 2024. See if you can work in a way that is measured, disciplined, structured, strategic. These are all the Saturnian kind of things. So if you can work that way this year, you'll have, you'll have a good year. Saturn will support you. Now I've got here, Saturn in Aquarius contains energy of the rule breaker. In Capricorn, we were building rules, we were following rules, right? That was 2020 to 2023. And in Aquarius, this is the time to break down those rules because there would have been unnecessary and extra rules built up across Saturn and Capricorn. So I've got here, where do you need to break some rules? And I've got here, Rahu is in Jupiter. So perhaps you need to factor some fun into this year as well. Okay, Rahu in Jupiter wants you to escape a little bit. Rahu in Jupiter wants you to take a holiday. Uh, and when I say Rahu in Jupiter, I mean Rahu in Pisces. Okay, I mean Rahu lauded by Jupiter. All right, let's keep going here with Saturn. So I've got here, Saturn will be in Satya Bishak Nakshatra until April 2024. Saturn will then be in Purvabhadrapada from April to October 2024. Saturn will be back in Satya Bishak October to December 2024. So this is quite an interesting year in terms of the nakshatras where Saturn will be. Saturn's going to be, as I say, in Satya Bishak for the dates. I'll, I'll have them on the screen. Saturn in Satya Bishak, I've got written here, use this energy for deep healing if possible. If there are routines or structures or things you want to put in place for health and healing, Saturn in Satya Bishak is the ideal time. And I'm going to give you a link when it comes to Saturn in Satya Bishak. I'm going to give you a link to Barbara O'Neill. Barbara O'Neill is a really brilliant naturopath, I guess I would call her. She's a She's a healer. She's, she's, she's got all the remedies to heal the body, natural remedies. She's 
in some ways better than a doctor. So I'll give you a couple of links to her videos below. Um, she has this wonderful home remedy of the castor oil pack and she teaches you how to make it and I'll tell you something I've been doing this every day since I got back here and it has helped me sleep I put them on my back because I have this like recurring pain on my back um, and I'm trying to get rid of that now and I'll tell you something my sleep every night has been so deep and so healing it's been incredible so I'm gonna keep doing this she says that like if your problem has been there for quite some time you've got to do it every day for like two months or three months or so so if you've had the problem for three years you might need to do three months of this daily pack thing and so yeah I'm gonna while I'm here I'm going to put that thing on my back and it really I'm feeling the benefits already but this is Saturnian medicine because you've got to do it every day for a long time so you can see that the remedies some of the remedies that she's got in there they're quite Saturnian in nature um, and Sattva Bishak of course has healing energy so you know so too does I mean like there are a lot of great naturopaths that come out of and homeopaths and things like that that come out of Sattva Bishak equally Virgo Virgo produces wonderful um, healers and natural remedy specialists now we've got Saturn in Purva Bhadrapada. Uh, I've got here, this would be great energy for expanding your finances actually. That's how I'm reading that. Because Lord of Purva Bhadrapada, which is Jupiter, is going to be in Taurus. So, and that's from April onwards. So, and that's where uh, Saturn moves into Purva Bhadrapada there from April to October. So we've got some really good energy, I think, to, you know, if you feel that you've been... That financially it's been really hard for you to get ahead over the last few years this could be your window really we'll have a look at this as I do the monthlies we'll have a look at it in more detail but I'm thinking April to October this can be a time I think where we really can make some progress uh, financially if, if you feel that that has been hard let's take a look at Jupiter so what's Jupiter doing? So Jupiter on the 31st of December 2023, Jupiter is going to move forward. Mercury is also moving forward on 2nd January. And I got an email from one of you, one of my lovely clients who wrote and told me that when Mercury is in retrograde, she does feel that it impacts her health. It impacts her immune system. So I thought that was really a really um, astute and good observation. So see, if you notice any improvements 2nd January onwards but of course 31st December onwards we've got Jupiter moving forward now I've got here 30th April or 1st of May depending on where you are in the world Jupiter will move into Taurus and I'll cover this in a lot more detail as we go into the year but just quickly now I've got here this is a much better position for Jupiter I do believe I even though and this is funny that I say this because even though Jupiter is good friends with Mars right because Jupiter has been in Aries lauded by Mars and Jupiter gets on with Mars um, and Jupiter doesn't always get on with Taurus uh, Venus sorry <laughs> but I've got here, I, I'm still going to call it, I'm still going to say Jupiter transits well in the second house, you see, which is why I'm thinking that Jupiter in Taurus is going to be good. And we are looking at transits at the moment. So, yeah, it's quite interesting. I've got here mid-October to, to Feb 2025, Jupiter retrogrades in Taurus. So we're going to have some retrograde energy here with Jupiter as well again I will cover that as we get up to these things I'll cover the, these in a lot more detail let's take a look at Mars so Mars starts the year in Sagittarius in January 2024 and finishes the year with a retrograde in Cancer in December so if we're taking a look at the flight path of Mars okay he's going from Sagittarius through to Cancer so Mars is going to go through Sagittarius Capricorn Aquarius so that's like the public or the work sector that's group type of energy and then when Mars moves into Pisces uh, Pisces Aries Taurus you know that's going to be more you're building yourself you're working on yourself it's more about you 
possibly building up your finances, that kind of thing. And then we're going to have Mars move sort of, yeah, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer. Again, that's kind of more social as a sector. It's more social, it's more personal, it's more of your home life, that kind of thing. So in this way, we can get a feel for the year ahead and the different sectors we'll be working with when it comes to Mars. I've got here, Mars is exalted and extremely powerful from 12 Feb to early March. Just wait for that. <laughs> it's quite fun doing this out here. <laughs> Do you know it's really hot as well? It's 29 degrees today. It's really hot. Anyway, um, okay. Mars is exalted and extremely powerful from 12 Feb to early March. We've got here, this could be an intense time in the collective. Yeah. Exalted and powerful from yeah, 12 Feb to early March. And when I was looking at this yesterday on the screen, I think Pluto's in the mix. So that's why I'm kind of saying this could be an intense time in the collective as well. So it's just a, t a time to take care. Eclipses. What have we got going on with eclipses? All right. Well, I'm just going to touch on these really, really briefly. You can mark these dates in your diary. I'm going to be marking them in my diary. Make sure I don't do any sessions on these days. So on the 25th of March, we've got lunar eclipse. I do think this is going to be quite a straightforward eclipse. I'm not too concerned about that one. 8th April, solar eclipse. I actually think this one's quite beautiful. We've got some lovely energies involved. We've got Venus and Moon. I'm pretty sure it's an exalted Venus. So this could be a new beginning in love. This could bring someone into your life in a profound way. Um, and also there's something about the future, like you're catching up or something like that. Then we've got 18 September, there's a lunar eclipse. Now Mars is aspecting into this eclipse. So that's a little bit full on energy there. Then we've got 2nd October solar eclipse. Mars aspects into this eclipse as well. We've got 17th October lunar eclipse. Now sun and moon are on the cusp and Mars aspects. So of all of the eclipses this year, I'm going to mark 17th October as being one to watch out for. Um, 18th September and 2nd October, these could also be tense or intense in some way. But I don't see any of these eclipses as being as bad as the, I think it was 14th October eclipse that we had this year, which kicked off war and all that kind of thing. Mars was involved in that eclipse. And that's why, and that was close to Ketu, it was a full-on eclipse. We, we don't have anything that bad happening this year, but I will mark the last three eclipses. Mars is aspecting into those. They could be a bit more intense. I will, I will say that for those eclipses. All right, well, I think we're good to begin the, the mini reports for each sign. So if you're going to stick with me, Stick with me. I'll see if I end up animating something by my side. I feel like I want to put graphs on the screen or something. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Aries, Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Aries Ascendant, Aries Moon or Aries Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Aries, how we're going to do this is we're going to look at health, we're going to look at work, we're going to look at love. I will touch on the astrology a little bit, but this is more synthesis and analysis. So I'm not going to go too in depth. If you'd like to book a personal outlook, you can. Uh, I've got people who are booked in and all that kind of thing. So there I go into a lot of detail. All right, let's take a look at health. All right, so I've got here, if health was challenged last year, you will fare much better this year because Jupiter transits second from Aries. Okay, you'll be inspired to eat healthy from April onwards, definitely. And Saturn is offering good energy if you choose to be disciplined and maintain good physical routines. Across July and August, you might be tempted to overeat and that's okay. But if weight gain is an issue, you might want to just take care of that across those two months. All right, let's take a look at work. Saturn in your 11th house is bringing lots of opportunities still right through to March 2025. Now if last year felt slow for you 
it was a seven year it was a Ketu year so that could be why if you feel like there weren't that many opportunities or there wasn't much happening it was a seven year that could be why but this year we've got an eight year there are no excuses this year right so you can accomplish a lot but I want to say pace yourself go slowly with Saturn it's about a little bit each day it's not about doing everything at once and burning out that's not the energy so go slowly chip away chip away chip away and then at the end of the year you might look back and go my goodness I actually did a lot Jupiter in Taurus aspecting fellow earth houses is encouraging you to expand your finances this is the year to save a lot of money if you're able to do so and let's look at love so love love is always good all year round you know Venus is the most giving of all the planets but I'll, I'll give you some highlight months here so March and April are highlight months for love in fact from April to mid August Venus energy is very promising for love now mid October through to end of November is also really good for love this year for you Aries and stick with me through the year I'll go more in depth and in detail uh, in the monthly reports as well all right we are now going to welcome Taurus Taurus welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Taurus ascendant Taurus moon or Taurus sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so let's take a look at health health wise if you're finding it hard to maintain discipline in your health routines or you're finding it hard to maintain good sleep patterns sorry guys I've just got ants crawling on me it's Australia this is gonna happen um, I thought there was another ant no there isn't <laughs> yeah health look Taurus I mean I, I see what's going on here you might have been finding it hard to sleep um, or you maybe yeah sleep has been disturbed or lighter or something like that but here it's due to Saturn's third aspect into your 12th house now work or house related problems might be taking up your spare energy could be causing some stress and that could be causing a bit of pressure on your health it could also be making it hard to rest so I've got here see if you can restructure your work so that you rest in bursts during the day or so that your work recharges you somehow so that could be something to look into yeah because that is something I'm definitely looking at as well how can I make it so that work is recharging for me well I've come out today and I tell you the Sun is recharging me quite a bit right now <laughs> it's really good uh, work let's take a look at work for you so Saturn is restructuring work for you yeah that is true uh, which may mean delays or if you are self-employed that things are a bit lean financially okay but this is not going to last long because Jupiter in Taurus that's from April onwards is going to bring finances in but it will require leadership energy from you okay it'll require your initiative it'll require your presence it'll require your directed willpower you're going to need to put in energy here to engage this now end of April and all of May is really excellent for career growth for you this year so definitely make the most of that time and when it comes to love where are the highlight times where is it not so good okay so last week of January to early March is good for love for you then from April onwards you've got a sublime stretch of love this is good Taurus I'm loving this for you and that's right through so that's April to mid-September that's beautiful for love life and November and December are also good months for love for you Taurus as well remember Venus is the most giving of the planets she rewards the most so enjoy that energy Taurus and we are now gonna welcome Gemini Gemini welcome thank you so much for joining I'm just checking the time oh I think we're okay yes we are it's not going to cut out um, and isn't this nice to be outdoors Gemini <laughs> I just need to stop every now and then and marvel at where I am because every now and then I do check out the weather in London and it is cold so I'm pretty lucky to be here uh, all right Gemini let's take a look so this is Gemini ascendant Gemini moon or Gemini Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology 
So we're going to take a look at health, work and love for the year. I'm going to do this in a general sort of way. I won't go too detailed in the astrology. So let's take a look at health. So I've got here Saturn's 10th aspect on your 6th house. Could be putting pressure on your health. But Rahu in the 10th could be giving you great energy to pursue opportunities and work. It just depends at what stage you are in life, you know, but there is, there is some good energy here. But if you're experiencing health challenges, you do have a reason. I've got here when Jupiter moves to be 12th from Gemini in April, it will be important to be disciplined about sleep. Okay, so from April onwards, if you can really look to maintaining a good sleep pattern, that's going to be so healing and nourishing for you. It's going to be great. I've got here sleep is massively healing and to get a couple of hours of sleep before midnight. It's that pre midnight sleep that you want. So if you sleep earlier and wake up earlier, that's going to be a lot better for you from April onwards. Let's take a look at work. So I've got here Saturn wants you to have more power, more authority and more say over how you live your life. Across this year, if you choose to take on more responsibility or if you step up leadership of your own life or of your own career, you know, this is definitely about responsibility. You, and if you take up that responsibility, you're going to be rewarded in the long run. And this is the kind of time where you want to take the risky step up, not the safe ground that you know. So don't go for the same old thing and the same level of pay packet or no take that risky step up go for the more money go for the thing that scares you a little bit uh, because Saturn can quite possibly help you okay and that's where if you're having trouble getting work or something like that sometimes it's because you're looking backwards at the old level that you've been on sometimes you need to look at the new thing that is a new level with more responsibility, more money, it scares you a little bit, but that's actually the thing you need to do. Okay. Now love, let's take a look at love. I've got here Gemini ladies in particular. You could materialize a man before Jupiter uh, enters Taurus. So this is um, through to about April of this year. It's a really promising time for Gemini ladies to um, experience a bit of I'm going to say wish fulfillment because Jupiter's there in the 11th house Saturn's aspecting this is why I say Saturn's aspecting Saturn can materialize a man in a sort of literal way um, but everyone else when it comes to love love life generally improves from mid-feb to end of March and end of April through to mid-october is another great stretch of Venus energy for you Gemini so I'm liking the look of this year for you Gemini. Take care. We are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon or Cancer Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we're going to take a look in general terms just at health, work and love. So when it comes to health, Cancer, wow you've got a lot going on here. So much is being transformed in your world. Okay, Saturn is 8th from Cancer and so if you are feeling tired or run down, don't overdo it. You've definitely got to rest. You've definitely got to take it easy. Please don't overdo anything, Cancer. I've got here, this is a time where you might need a regular meditation practice just to release tension and recover from the very big changes that are taking place. Now you might be in this transit and you might be looking around saying, but nothing's changing. What is she talking about? It's all the same. When it's like that, the, the big massive changes are taking place kind of behind the scenes, okay? So you've got to know, basically you're, you're undergoing a time where there's massive, massive change. And if we've got an omen, we've got a big, I don't know what that is in the sky, but it sounds huge. Whereas the plane that went over previously was really small. I could hear it. So yeah, you've got big changes taking place I've got here yeah big changes that are taking place go slow now work Saturn could be transforming your work massively could be transforming what you do how you do it how you earn you know you could be going through major major shifts when it comes to work I've got here everything is up for transformation this is the time to have a say in the design of your life Rahu is ninth from Cancer so you're being asked to take up more authority 
regarding your power, your energy, how you spend your life, how you spend your time. And it's like you're being give you're possibly going to be given little opportunities here and there to shift things so that you're doing more of what you want or that you're being more of who you are, you know, in your life. That's really what's happening here at this time. And we've even got a little warning sign for you. <laughs> Cancer, this is an omen. Your whole world is being transformed. There are these alarm bells as well. But in a good way. In a good way. All right. These are not alarm bells as in danger. This is like... These are alarm bells in terms of... Your world is significantly changing. Got here, Jupiter in the 11th is going to provide you with a lot of opportunities. Take up the opportunities that challenge you. Take up the opportunities that expand you and extend you. This is amazing. It's been so quiet here all day. Let's crack on. Love. Let's take a look at love. All right. Well, mid-March onwards, love life improves a lot. Uh, let's have a look. Mid-March onwards, love life improves a lot and is really good through to mid-April or so. And then mid-May through to early November is a great stretch of love for you. Yeah, I mean, it's looking pretty good for love life, Cancer, but if you stay tuned with my monthly updates, uh, you will definitely get the latest and more in-depth information when it comes to love. Thank you so much for joining Cancer. Hi Leo, welcome Leo. This is Leo Ascendant, Leo Moon or Leo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Apologies Leo if the camera position has changed. There was an alarm in Cancer and I was almost going to move. I picked up all my gear and then I walked that way and it's like, then the alarm stopped and I was like, okay. There's no alarm for you. It's all good. All right, Leo, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at health, we're going to look at work and we're going to look at love sort of in general terms. I'm not going to go too deep into the astrology. This is really synthesis and interpretation, you know, and, and many of you are booking uh, a reading for the detail if, if you would like to do that kind of thing but this should be enough to carry you through the year all right let's take a look at health so i've got here some relationships could be causing you stress i've got here especially close partnerships of any kind if you're married you got a business partner any of that these relationships could be stressful and they could be impacting your health a little bit and i've got here realize it's not the other person they are mirroring either something that you resist or something that you dislike in yourself or something that you judge okay you hold a judgment against that so the mirroring thing is complicated because sometimes you know they say if you spot it you've got it so sometimes it is mirroring something of you but sometimes it's something that you hold a judgment about and so the universe is kind of asking you to release that judgment um, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm working with this stuff myself all the time. Uh, I've got here, don't overwork. And if you can maintain a gentle daily fitness routine, that would be really good. Meditation would be especially helpful for you at this time. Now work. This is quite interesting. Saturn could be structuring things so that you're able to work overseas or getting your life ready so that there are more international opportunities available for you. Equally, Saturn could be preparing an audience for your work. Maybe you're writing a book and maybe Saturn is actually, believe it or not, preparing that audience for you. I've got here, hang in there with all the restructuring. At times it might feel like there's not much going on, but you just put your head down and keep chipping away. Keep doing your little bit of work each day and you'll be amazed. I've got here, Jupiter has been giving your own personal power a boost you might be tested in how you use that power from april onwards and when it comes to love january to mid-feb is really nice for love uh, and again it's good from april to mid-may 
then you have a beautiful long stretch of good Venus energy so that will help your love life this is from mid-June to early December guys it is looking like a good year ahead for you and we are now going to welcome Virgo Virgo welcome so this is Virgo ascendant Virgo moon or Virgo sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology all right Virgo what have we got going on so if we take a look at health sorry I'm just gonna Put my bag <laughs> so it's not in the sun um, I'm gonna take a look at health work and love so when it comes to health I've got here your health is being transformed at this time if you're experiencing health challenges or issues hang in there and I've got here and do what you can on your end so basically you've got Saturn moving sixth from now this is good this could be good for health uh, but for some of you some of you might be feeling Mm, pressured or challenged possibly it, it depends on some things but if you're experiencing health challenges or issues I've got here hang in there do what you can on your end maintain a healthy diet and see if you can get extra sleep uh, across this time Saturn is in Vipreet Raj Yoga for you okay so this is a really superb transit and you've got this until March 2025 but basically if you have any challenges that come your way from now to March 2025 if you face those challenges with courage you're going to win so for example if it's a health challenge then you can expect um, sorry I do get distracted if it's a health challenge you can expect to heal but it's like it's like you'll have to do something uh, you know and, and as I say it could be something like watch some of that Barbara O'Neill video I've got in the link below and try some of her methods you might find that they help you at this time so but it's like you, if you do something if you face the challenge if it's a health challenge if you face it with courage and meet it and say I want to work with this I want to heal I want to get better you'll get better you've got as I say Saturn is in Vipreet Raj Yoga you've got good energy here and some of you will be feeling really healthy actually some of you will have good energy with this it just depends on some things all right let's take a look at work I've got here Saturn wants you to succeed when it comes to work Saturn is likely to be giving you platform building opportunities at this time Saturn might be giving you jobs might be giving you the next step up I remember when Saturn was six from my I think it was moon and Saturn just kept giving me jobs job after job I had jobs and it was like I had I do many I had all these offers and it was incredible so um, see if that happens for you now I can't remember what Vedic numerology year I was running at the time but if say for example last year you didn't have much going on that's because it was a seven year so you do have a reason as to why if things have been a bit quiet but this could be the year that's busy for you and take advantage of that because Saturn really wants to build you up now okay so work with the taskmaster uh, and you will be rewarded you will achieve things now I've got here um, if you are in a court case this might be slow and testing or challenging I've got here but ultimately you have Saturn well placed and you have a strong chance of creating win-win outcomes Rahu 7th from Virgo could be providing international work opportunities so keep that in mind oh we've got the alarm again I might have to move this was here in Cancer how interesting and for Cancer I said it's not like because in Jyotish we have to take all the omens we have to take everything into account and in Cancer I said it wasn't a bad alarm that sounded with the international work opportunities isn't that interesting some of you might be traveling there we go it's gone oh how amazing I quite like I was going in Leo I wanted to move but I've, I quite like sitting here now if we get this little omen pop up now and then all right now let's take a look at love life um, I've got here January to early March is good for love then end of April to mid June is also good for love then early July to the end of the year is great for love so you've got really nice large windows of love life being good and with Venus that's what it is Venus is the most rewarding of the planets 
everywhere she goes around the zodiac she wants people to have a good time guys it's looking like a good year ahead for you honestly you've got a vipreet raj yoga here uh six from it's beautiful so honestly make the most of now to march 2025 you are running superb energy virgo i'm really happy for you all right we are now going to welcome libra libra welcome thank you so much for joining i'm just checking on the time we're good we're going to take a look at health work and love life so uh, i'm going to go in general terms as well i'm not going to go too in depth or detail because i do a monthly every month i'm going to do monthly this month as well so let's take a look at health so i've got here health your health should be strong now for a year and a half with rahu in the sixth if there are health challenges that crop up solid sleep is going to heal you um, even a short getaway will help you a lot so if you can schedule in small getaways or holidays here and there that will help you a lot and honestly for my whole life when i was growing up we never had a holiday like holidays were just not the thing in my, in my life but since like you know um i'm sort of grown up now and i do my own thing so what i've discovered is that little short little breaks are brilliant they're really good and even if it's just like somewhere in your own town but there's something to be said for um changing the structure of your day and changing your location changing where you are and that is a um it is a remedy as well in vedic astrology and vastu and ayurveda and all these things i'm pretty sure somewhere in one of these brilliant branches of wisdom they talk about that um, definitely in vedic astrology i've seen some authors say that your location could be uh problematic and you might need to move um to shake up the energy a bit yeah i'm, I'm an advocate for for this kind of thing it's important to change your location now and then now let's take a look at work so i've got here saturn is restructuring your finances and investments at this time if you employ people your team members could be challenging you at this time also your children might be challenging you at this time if you have kids your leadership and visionary skills are required this year okay so that's going to be important you're going to have to lead something lead the way or, or have a vision for a better way of doing things and that's going to be up to you I've got here April and May are especially good career months for you this year and when it comes to love love is looking good all year but I've got here in particular love is great until April then mid May to early July love life is looking good and August till the end of the year Venus is in great shape for you Libra so I want to thank you so much for stopping by and we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon or Scorpio Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we're going to look at health, work and love. I'm just going to go in brief and I won't go too much into the astrology. We're going to cover that throughout the whole year. So health could be a bit up and down this year for you. Saturn Dia period is on for you at the moment. So energy will fluctuate. Jupiter in your six can promote health if you have healthy habits and if you are healthy right now it's a good thing but if you have problems Jupiter in the six could expand the problem okay so if you have any issue in your health or something like that Jupiter can expand that got here um, implement good health habits and you can achieve great health at this time now work let's take a look at work so Saturn is restructuring your home life or where you live um, you might even move at this time. Ouch! Sorry, Scorpio, I just edit that bit out. I thought I was being bitten by ants. Ouch! No, I am being bitten. I think it's okay. <laughs> the ants like to eat me, so do the mosquitoes. Okay. Um, Saturn is restructuring your home life or where you live you might even move at this time now Jupiter is expanding your service to the world and Rahu is encouraging you to be creative so Rahu is definitely encouraging you to step up be a leader in your field 
do your best with your energy but know that home related matters or key family relationships might take up your time across this year it could be that you're moving basically if this is a time where you move um, but it's kind of like when it comes to work yes work is going to continue but um, life might demand you be at home more for some reason or relationship with mother comes more into focus or your family members need you more or there's something to do with home here we'll take a look at love so i've got here love uh, from the end of april to the end of june that could be a bit challenging time in your love life and same for the month of august okay otherwise love life all year round is looking really really good venus is in good energy and wants you to enjoy okay so thank you so much for tuning in scorpio we are now going to welcome sagittarius sagittarius welcome thank you so much for joining so this is sagittarius ascendant sagittarius moon or sagittarius sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology so we're going to have a look at health, work and love. I'm going to do this in brief guys because I do the monthlies, I do special breakout videos, I do so much across the year so I'm not going to go too in depth here. Um, if you can, if you want to book it like a personal reading, you can, you can book that anytime. Um, Alright, so health, health, I've got here, your health should be really good throughout this year. You are one of the few signs, very few signs, uh, where health is looking really strong, okay. So Rahu and Pisces in the fourth house is encouraging you to relax more, to be at home more. If you are dealing with ongoing health stuff, um, that's kind of a feature of your life, then yeah, it could be Rahu in Pisces um, could challenge, provide a little bit of health challenge. But otherwise, besides Rahu, I'm seeing everything's promoting good health for you. Is what I'm seeing okay but if you've got ongoing health stuff Rahu in Pisces could be a little bit challenging okay uh, but equally Rahu in Pisces in the fourth is encouraging you to relax more and that's going to be good for your health so maybe you need to spend more time at home I've got here maybe you need to break the rules so you can have some fun you know that's important too uh, if you feel restless at home have a day trip or a short trip somewhere that's going to do you a world of good now when we look at work, I've got here Saturn is going to give you lots of platform building opportunities this year. Yeah, you've got this wonderful Saturn here. Um, this year through to March 2025 is a very important time for you to take advantage of. Oh, there is an ant. Sorry, I just saw him. Yeah. I've got ants eating me. This is so Australian. I'm glad it's not like frilly neck lizards or something that'd be scary all right um we're here in this wonderful saturn transit of yours and i got distracted maybe you're going to go to australia who knows uh let's have a look yeah i've got here this year through to march 2025 is a very important time for you to take advantage of jupiter will help expand work and finances from April this year wow look at that you got Jupiter helping as well this is huge I've got here invest the money that comes through wisely and in a long-term way oh how interesting we've got that alarm pop up I hope that's been popping up quite a bit we've had it in Cancer Virgo and now you guys Sagittarius and that's to do with the big money that's coming in I think that's an omen that's saying you got big money coming in some of you I think that's what that is because I've got here invest the money that comes through wisely and in a long-term way honestly some of you could really profit at this time and it's a Saturnian year so look at that love okay let's take a look at that so mid May to early July might not be so great for love uh, same as end of August through to mid September that could also be a challenging time for you in love otherwise it's a really great year uh, ahead for love definitely all right well thank you so much for tuning in Sagittarius we are now going to welcome Capricorn Capricorn welcome thank you so much for joining I thought I'd sit outside today and I'm just looking at the time we're all good um, yeah I just wanted to come out you know and um, be in the sun 
and it has been interesting. I've had ants eating me and uh, yeah. Anyway, let's take a look at Capricorn. This is Capricorn, Ascendant, Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. We're going to take a look at health, work and love just at a high level here. So health, you're very much the same as Sagittarius. You are one of the lucky signs who should have very good health right now. Uh, if that's not the case, I'm just trying to see what planet that might be. That could be Jupiter in the 4th. Um, that's in Aries, so that's through to April. So if you're not feeling the great health energy, just watch out. April onwards, it should improve a lot. Okay, you should feel energy should be good. So got here, your, your health should be really good throughout this year. You are one of the few signs where health is strong. Rahu in your third house is giving you extra energy to pursue your goals. It's good for hobbies. Uh, it's good for socializing. Now, I have, if you are tired, it's possible. Heed that. It could be due to Jupiter fourth from your sign. That's in Aries. But that's through to April. So have a look. April to the rest of the year, your health should be really good. That's what I'm seeing. You can always come and comment on this video later and let me know. Now work, uh, Saturn and Jupiter, these two are working hard for you and they want you to build your long-term wealth right now. Jupiter wants this from April onwards when he goes into Taurus. Slowly and steadily, you are now going to build up what you might not have been able to build over the past five years or so. Okay, so if it's been a tough five years and you've been limited, you've been restricted, you've been trying stuff and it's not working and you know um it's okay because now is the time this is we're talking long-term wealth so and the funny thing with long-term wealth is sometimes that means you have to do a lot of work for it before you see the rewards and i know about that <laughs> i know about putting so much work and it's like well where are the rewards but they come they come in a big way but later it's a it's with saturn it's a thing of staying power with Saturn, it's a thing of... I'm just being eaten by ants. Uh, it's a, with Saturn, it's a thing of like um, staying power and it's the person who stays in that game for a long time. They get rewarded massively, but later. But yeah, you got to have stayed in the game kind of thing. So that's pretty interesting. This is that kind of year where you could be getting in, into a game that you got to stick at for a while or you're sustaining something this year. Got here, time should go more smoothly from here on. Okay, you're at that end bit, if you're a Capricorn moon, you're at that end bit of Sadi Sati now. You're gradually coming off the, off it, you know, it, it's, your life is gonna change. I have seen that at the very end of Sadi Sati, some, sometimes things can happen for people. It's true. Oh, the alarm sounds. Yeah, okay. Well, one of one or two of you might still have, there could be some dilemma or something. Yeah, yet to go. That's if there's karma to pay, you know. But honestly, a lot of you, things should just be starting to get better now. Let's take a look at love life. So I've got here an alarm in love. <laughs> um, it's not a bad alarm, guys. I'm not, oh, we've got a lady beetle. Oh, come on, lady beetle. That's good luck. We're talking about love for Capricorn. Oh, come on. Come on, I want to show you to the camera. Oh, come on, little lady beetle. <gasps> Look at this. We've got a lady beetle. Capricorn, that's for you. Oh, she just flew right in. Oh, and she's just flown away. Oh, that's so sweet. All right, let's take a look. Love. Wow, that's a good omen for love. Capricorn. Well, you might meet the love of your life, let me tell you. What have we got here? Mid-June to end of July isn't great for love. I'll tell you that I'll tell you the times when it's not good for love. Mid-June to end of July, not good for love. And then we've got mid-September to mid-October, also not great for love. Otherwise, it's an excellent year for love life. And for Venus energy in general, I mean, if you just need to treat yourself, if you just need to go out and have a good time, do that, Capricorn. We've got to do that. We're here to enjoy life, you know, I do believe. All right, not just pay karma. I mean, obviously we have to do that as well, but I mean, we can't be doing that all the time. All right, Capricorn, thank you so much for joining. We are now gonna welcome Aquarius. Hi, Aquarius. So what happened? I'm in a new location. Yeah, I, um, 
was recording the whole video at my local university and when I came to your sign I discovered oh no the PDF I had didn't have your slide notes in it so I've just come back and I have found the PDF that has your slide notes in it let's go through them where am I so this is my mother's garden and this is actually where I spent Christmas Day just here in the garden I would show you the whole garden but it's a little bit messy so I'm not going to do that but I had a beautiful beach blanket on the grass just over there I had my book I had my hat on my snacks it was incredible I had a great day all right Aquarius this is Aquarius ascendant Aquarius moon or Aquarius sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology we're going to take a look at a really high level general overview of the year ahead we're going to look at health work love I'm not going to go too specific into the planetary movements and things like that this is more my synthesis and my interpretation of your stars in a high level general sort of way and that's because I do so many reports across the year you can also book a reading uh, I do have some sessions on next year people next week <laughs> which is probably next year actually um, I yes I've got some sessions next week people uh, want their yearly outlook but people ask for you know a yearly outlook at any time of the year so don't feel like you have to do it at the start of every year or any of that a good time actually to get another reading is when Saturn changes signs that's a really good time or when Rahu Ketu changes signs that's another good time as well um, anyway so let's take a look at health now you've got Saturn in your sign so this is particularly important if Saturn is on your ascendant or if Saturn is on your moon especially your ascendant definitely you might be feeling that you've only got so much energy in the day uh, and it's important to heed that don't overwork Saturn wants you to work he is the task taskmaster he wants you to work hard but he doesn't want you to overwork so that's really really important don't overwork uh, at this time I've also got here that Jupiter could be challenging you health wise we've got Jupiter third from your sign and uh, I believe after April it's going to be fourth from your sign when it's fourth from your sign so that's April onwards I will say take care of your health definitely don't overdo it April onwards I've got here March or April could be months where you don't want to overdo it or you don't want to work too hard and the reason I say that is because Mars is going to be there with Saturn as well and that could be quite confusing because on the one hand you want to do lots but then Saturn is putting the brakes on or there are delays and that can be a time where um, your health will play up potentially because if you're not giving your body rest your body will find a way of getting rest so you definitely don't want to overdo it during March or April I've got here Rahu in your second house will give you quite the appetite to eat all kinds of things and uh, I mean that's okay you know um, these days I so I've typically mostly been a vegetarian now for many many years but yeah I have started eating meat again a little bit because I'm traveling and sorry there are flies down here um, because I am traveling and so yeah I, I let myself eat some meat because I need protein and sometimes like I don't know they don't do boiled eggs on a plane and things like that so yeah I do eat a bit of meat when I'm traveling sorry got bugs um, got here see if you can be disciplined with diet not eat too much junk food for example that is a thing here now work I've got here Saturn is working you hard and if Saturn is going over your moon you might find that work is solace and I'm just being eaten by mosquitoes I was being eaten by ants in the other spot this is Australia guys um, let's take a look here yeah work might be solace if, if Saturn's going over your moon but equally I mean regardless this is a year where I think you'll find work is going to be a place where you can truly be yourself and especially if things are tough in your personal life uh, work is going to be this is going to be a great work year for you because Saturn is your Lord so this could this year could feel very familiar the energy could feel familiar and good and 
that you can get ahead okay so this this could be a really good year for you Jupiter from April onwards wants you to make money and invest it in your property or improve your property or um, get on the property ladder or save for that kind of activity or something about you earning money and investing it in your home. Now Rahu is pursuing gains over the next year and a half. This is your year to make money and invest it well, definitely. And don't worry if it takes time. Uh, you're, you've got Saturnian energy, you know all about this. If it takes time, it's okay. You just got to keep chipping away a little bit at a time. The rewards are coming. Love, what's happening with your love life Aquarius? So I've got here mid-January to early July. Love life should be very good. And now the challenging times in your love life this year, we're looking at early July to end of August. We're also looking at mid-October. Sorry, I'm just brushing that mozzie away. Um, Mid-October to early November. So challenging times, early July to end of August and mid-October to early November. But otherwise, Aquarius, it is looking quite good for you. I do think that this can be a year where you establish yourself more, where when it comes to your work, you feel more like yourself than you've ever done before. work could be solace let's have a think about our aquarius moon people aquarius moon i just want to say that if you if you've got aquarius moon and you've experienced any loss significant losses this year my heart goes out to you honestly it's so tough to lose a loved one to lose a pet a beloved pet uh, or anything like that you hang in there aquarius allow the process and once those feelings of grief and all of that clear and, and they you move through them then you're in that place where you know that that's an angel you can call by name if you, if you lost someone special you know you'll be able whoops oh i better not let that bag disappear then you'll be able to um you know yeah, then you'll be free to, to be with your loved one in a way that you've never been with them before. And the other thing I also wanted to think about and just look at, did I, because I've had to retake this a couple of times because there'd been noises and all sorts of things. Did I try to factor in why you've got a new location? Because you've got a new location, Aquarius. No one else got a new location. And as a Jyotish practitioner, we've got to factor in all the symbolism of a reading so you've got something special here Aquarius if you're looking to relocate if you're looking to change location this could be the year for you you could find yourself in an entirely new location even though you didn't plan for it so think about that and let me know in the comments below if that does happen I would love to hear from you but Aquarius hang in there you're doing amazing you got a good year ahead it's your year a Saturnian year. If anyone's going to prosper, it's going to be you. And we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon or Pisces Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now how I'm going to do this today is I'm just going to be very high level, just do a general overview. I'm not going to go too in detail or in depth because across the whole year I'm producing lots of reports and you can of course book as well if you want a yearly report. So there's lots of ways of getting very detailed info but this is good for high level. I think this is, this is okay. All right, so let's take a look at help. I've got here, and the other thing is I'm not going too in-depth in terms of the astrology. I'm just giving you general synthesis, uh, analysis, overview, okay? That's how I'm doing this one. Um, health, let's take a look at health. So what here, your health could be under a bit of pressure across this year. That's of course because Saturn is 12th from. Uh, but all will be fine if you remain disciplined with sleep and disciplined with your diet. If you do all the healthy things a little bit each day, and you don't overwork then you're going to be just fine saturn is helping you restructure new health routines 
Be disciplined about health and you will definitely be fine. Meditation is going to serve you extremely well at this time. I strongly, strongly suggest that you put in a meditation practice uh, if you can. And that can be, that can even be, if you've got strong moon and Mars um, in your chart, so perhaps moon is receiving aspect from Mars or moon is conjunct Mars or moon is lauded by Mars as per sign or nakshatra or whatever, then you might find that a meditation style that suits you better is when you get into the zone uh, through working with your hands or doing something creative or you know when you paint and you lose track of time it's that kind of thing try to get as much of that kind of time in as you can through to March 2025 now work let's take a look at work I've got here it's great for you to be working on long-term goals and projects over the next few years it's good for you to save money and be financially conservative over the next few years as well Jupiter is protecting your finances through to April of this year but after that be very careful of expenses and see if you can save money or maintain a little buffer of money uh, for you know the coming coming little while that would be a good thing and if we take a look at love uh, I'm gonna tell you let's see what have I got here yep when it's good and when it's challenging as well so mid Feb to August love life should be very good for you August and September so that's August through to mid September uh, and November to early December could be challenging times in your love life this year otherwise Venus energy is looking really good for you and of course across the year Pisces you will be able to keep up with my monthly reports I am going to do a January monthly it's just going to be a bit late this uh, this time because I decided to make this one first and then I'll make the January outlook I'll try I'll aim and do that like maybe Monday or something but I'll see how I go I've also got sessions booked next week and things like that so yeah it is starting to get busy again Pisces now if you're end of Saadi Saathi um, Oh, beginning of Sati Sati. Sorry, I read the wrong thing. If you're at the beginning of Sati Sati, if you're a Pisces moon, do I have any extra guidance for you at this time? I mean, I think next year could be like just... It could be a bit slow, uh, actually. Yes, yeah, so I was saying it could be a bit slow and then the camera conked out. So look at that. I mean, um, equally, some of you... Look at that, the camera conked out, didn't it? So it's like, and I, when I had my 12 from transit, yeah, I had burnout. I did. I needed some significant time off. I kept working, but it was to a much reduced capacity. And I will say, one of you in the picker cards recently, I don't know if you're Pisces. I've forgotten what sign. Sometimes I try and remember everyone, but it's hard. Because um, when you guys tell me what you are, and I try to remember, but there are too many people. But what I will say is one of you had written in the picker card recently a comment. You said, I'm going to take the next few months off. And Pisces moon, I will say, look, if you're in some kind of position where you don't have to work too much or if you can not work as hard uh, and if you're feeling called to do that this year, that it could be it could be helpful. So we've got this year as a Saturn year. So strong Saturnian energy, you're in Sadi Sati, it's hard anyway. So I know it's it's tough. Um, I'm just trying to think. Next year we've got a Mars year, endings. And Mars is a year of endings, but it's also a year of energy. People have a lot of energy in a Mars year. So that's why it could be for some of you Pisceans, if this if it feels like you need to go slow to take time you're building up something long term you're building up something new you're starting a long-term project take your time don't rush enjoy the process enjoy the slowness and Saturnian times they are actually quite special because life does go slow because if you look at the world you know a lot of people they're just running around like headless chickens <laughs> and if you're a strong Saturnian well you know even if you try to run around like a headless chicken it doesn't work anyway you have to go slow so going slow is actually good it's underrated much underrated so embrace the slowness embrace the delays embrace the 
the time, the sensation of time, which is so unique to the earth plane. You know, I think when we go back to that other side, we step outside of the circle of time. We go outside of Saturn's rim and we time doesn't exist and that's why the other side they never understand when they give us guidance they don't understand time so that's why and i i know with my guides they keep giving me idea after idea after idea they're like here do this do this do this do this i'm like yeah, hello i can't do everything <laughs> at once that we have time here they don't have time there so i think there's there is a disparity with uh guidance and ideas and you know it's hard isn't it it's challenging Anyway, guys, I'm going to go and enjoy the rest of my day. I'm probably going to, after today, what am I doing now? So I'm going to, well, I'm going to get some kind of mango smoothie. I have to because I am in need now. And then I'll go home, might chill out a bit, have a bit of lunch and then start editing. Yeah, I think I will start editing. I'll try and get this out tomorrow. Guys, I want to thank you so much for being here. I want to thank any of i should do this at the beginning i'm just realizing i want to thank any of the long-term subscribers any of the people who've been with me for a really long time uh any of you might have joined yesterday and i want to thank you just as much because yeah i love all you guys you're just the best thank you for being a wonderful audience and uh happy new year you know i'm wishing you a great 2024 may this be your best year yet and yeah, I think it's it's important to just step into each new year with, with a bit of hope and optimism, you know, because, um, and leave, let go, let, leave behind, leave in 2023, whatever we want to leave in 2023, that's important too. All right, guys, well, I'm being eaten by ants still, gosh, I'm like, okay, I didn't kill that ant, but he might have been a bit squashed when I shoot him away whoops anyway i've probably got to come come back and pay that off i'll come back as an ant all right guys thank you so much for tuning in and i look forward to seeing you next time